Well, we're a little over halfway through this train wreck of a season, but a lot has happened since our journey with this team began. The 2019 Tigers finished less than favorably. Because a season has passed since part one, we have just a few small updates to cover before we continue. Our list of American League teams with the most losses has been updated. The 2019 Tigers are now fourth on this list with 114 losses. Our list of teams that have finished the most games out of first place since 1995 has also been updated. The 2019 Tigers are now second on this list after finishing 53 and a half games out of first place. The 2019 Orioles are also on this list, finishing 49 games back. Yikes. This is our last update from part one. The 2019 San Diego Padres hit only 224 doubles, which has them tied for fourth place on our list of 21st century teams with the fewest doubles. Now, back to the show. With the bases loaded, the 2003 Tigers batted 221, the worst in the American League that season. There were only 97 plate appearances in which a batter saw the bases loaded all season, the third lowest total for a team in the entire decade. With no outs and the bases loaded, their batting average was 111, the worst of any team all season. With runners in scoring position, they batted 228. This was the lowest average with runners in scoring position for any American League team throughout the entire 2000s. The 03 Tigers are one of only four teams since 1908 with as many as 58 home losses in one season. The Tigers have one of the least hitter-friendly parks in baseball. In 2003, their batting park factor was rated 93. Generally, anything over 100 favors batters, while anything under 100 favors pitchers. Their 93 batting park factor was the lowest for any American League home park. They had one of the most pitcher-friendly parks in all of baseball. Their pitching park factor was rated 95, tied with Seattle for the most pitcher-friendly park in the American League. Though Detroit's batting was better in away games, it was still among the worst in baseball. For example, among all American League teams, Detroit had the lowest batting average in their away games at 241. They had fewer hits in away games than any other American League team, with 665. This was 43 less than the next worst team, the Texas Rangers. They had the lowest away slugging percentage among all American League teams, at 387. They scored fewer runs in away games than any other American League team, with 314. Tigers pitching performed worse in away games. For example, Detroit had an ERA of 5.80 in away games, which was the worst away ERA in all of baseball in 2003. In away games, their whip was higher than any other team in baseball, at 1.614. In away games, opponents had a 302 batting average against Tigers pitching, the highest in baseball. Also in away games, teams had an 861 OPS against Tigers pitching, which was the highest in baseball. In 2003, the Tigers had only three games in which they scored 10 or more runs. This was the lowest total in all of baseball. They lost 40 games by five or more runs. Since 1904, only eight teams have lost more games in a season by this margin. The Detroit Tigers were completely shut out 17 times. The only team in the entire decade shut out more times than the 03 Tigers is the 08 Nationals, who were shut out 21 times. They had 39 games with five or fewer hits, the highest total for any team in 2003, and also tied for the most by a team in all of the 2000s decade. In 12 games, the Tigers reached base five or fewer times, the most in all of baseball. They lost all 12 of those games. There were only six games in which a Tigers player collected four or more hits, the lowest team total in the American League in 03. 
They had 17 games with no extra base hits at all. This was tied for most in all of baseball with the Dodgers. Throughout the season, there were only five instances of a Tigers player having a multi-homer game. No American League team had fewer instances of this than Detroit did. They scored one run or fewer 34 times. This was the highest total in the American League. In 84 different 9-inning games, the Tigers allowed 10 or more hits, which was second in all of baseball behind Texas's 85. However, Texas went 27-58 and 58 in those games, while Detroit went 14-70. and 70. In 70 different 9-inning games, Detroit allowed 15 or more base runners. They were tied with Texas for most games like this by an American League team. However, Texas went 21 and 49 in these games, while Detroit went 12 and 58. The Detroit Tigers were caught stealing 63 times in 2003, the most in the American League. There were two games in which opponents caught three Tigers base runners stealing, which was tied for most in all of baseball. They were the only team to be caught stealing four times in one game all season which took place on June 12th. They are one of only five teams in the 21st century with four caught stealings in one game. They had the lowest run scoring percentage in all of baseball at 26%. In total, Detroit had fewer base runners than any other team in 2003 with 3,289. Only 13% of those base runners scored, which was the lowest percentage in the American League. The Tigers led the American League in errors in 2003 with 138. They had the lowest overall fielding percentage of any American League team at 978. 90 players reached base due to an error by a Detroit player in 2003, which was the worst in all of baseball. The next closest team was the Atlanta Braves, who allowed 78 base runners due to an error. Of Detroit's 11 players who played in 81 or more games, 8 had a defensive war either at or below 0. No other American League team had this many players with a defensive war at or below 0. Carlos Pena led all American League first basemen in errors, with 13 on the season. Detroit allowed more stolen bases than any other team, with 128. They had the worst fielding percentage of any American League outfield, at 978. Their outfield also committed more errors than any other American League team, with 26. Dimitri Young was tied with Richie Sexton for the lowest defensive war in all of baseball, at negative 2.1. Yikes. Even though these 119 facts are meant to represent the team's losses, I wanted to focus on a few positives from the 2003 season. We're going into extras. In game number 161, played on September 27th, the Tigers avoided a historic 120th loss with a walk-off victory against the division-leading Minnesota Twins. They also avoided this loss in game number 162, with a 9-4 victory over their league rivals. They won five of their last six games as part of their best six-game stretch all season. With this, they avoided potentially being remembered as the worst team in all of baseball history. Detroit's nine straight losses to open up the 03 season was actually an improvement from their last opening in 2002, in which they lost 11 straight games to open the year. Just a fun fact from this season, on April 2nd, 2003, the Tigers had four pitchers make their Major League debut in the same game in Jeremy Bonderman, Will Ledesma, Chris Sperling, and Matt Roney. This was the first time this ever happened in baseball history. Bonderman gave up six runs in four innings pitched as a starter, taking the loss on the day. Their only all-star that year was Dimitri Young, and though he didn't play in the game, he had a pretty decent season. He sported a 297 batting average, 372 on base percentage, and 29 home runs. He tallied a career high in hits, home runs, walks, total bases, OPS, and OPS+. He also received the fourth most intentional walks in the American League, with 16. 
He was named the American League Player of the Week for his performance during the week of May 26th to June 1st. During this stretch, Young hit 458 with three homers, seven RBIs, and an OPS of 1.510. Speaking of June 1st, on this day, the Tigers faced Roger Clemens, sitting on 299 wins. They avoided becoming the victims of win number 300, but still lost the game in 17 innings at home. Ouch. The Tigers had more bunt hits than any other team in baseball, with 59. Detroit caught more base runners stealing than any other American League team, with 54. Brandon Inge caught more base runner stealing than any other American League catcher, with 40. Despite his team's pitiful efforts on the field, manager Alan Trammell actually received one point for AL Manager of the Year in 2003. The Tigers would really turn things around in the years to come. In 2004, their record improved to 72-90 with a 4th place AL Central finish. 2005 was pretty similar with a 71 and 91 record and another fourth place finish. Manager Alan Trammell was replaced after this year with Jim Leland. In 2006, they improved dramatically, winning 95 games and claiming a wildcard spot in the playoffs. They ended up sweeping the Oakland Athletics to win the American League Championship and advanced to the World Series for the first time since 1984. This 2006 team had 10 of the same players who suffered through the 03 campaign. In Brandon Inge, Ramon Santiago, Craig Monroe, Omar Infante, Nate Robertson, Jamie Walker, Will Ledesma, Fernando Rodney, Jeremy Bonderman, and Mike Morrall. I mostly just wanted to take this 119th back to wrap things up and discuss the legacy of this truly fascinating team. While I have laid out most categories where the Tigers were the worst in 2003, it is also clear that they were not the worst in other areas. Whether or not they are the worst team in baseball history will always be up for debate. But nevertheless, the 2003 Detroit Tigers will be remembered as one of the worst teams of all time. Despite their profoundly awful season, it is evident that some more modern teams could be in close company with the Tigers. 2018 was the first year in the modern era that saw eight teams lose as many as 95 games. It was also only the second time that as many as seven teams lost 95 games or more. Nowadays, if teams recognize that they don't realistically have a shot to compete, they will embrace the mighty tank meaning that they will intentionally put a team with no true chances of winning out on the field. They largely do this in hopes of obtaining a better spot in the next player draft to build for their future. Examples of this method seemingly working in a team's favor are admittedly limited and up to scrutiny. While many debate over the integrity or the place of tanking in sports today, I believe that it is not unrealistic to think that if the trend continues, than Detroit's awful 03 campaign, in all of its glory, all of its records, and legendarily terrible stat lines, will soon have company.